Welcome to E3. Evil communication corrupt good manners. The Christian life is a life of the highest of standards. That's why I, I, I'm always shocked when people say that because we teach about grace, that we are giving people license for sin. But I know that with an understanding of grace comes a very high level of responsibility. One of the things we have taught in the past is that with freedom comes responsibility. The fact that when you go to the university, you do not hear bells ring to wake you up and tell you that it's time to go to class. You have the freedom to wake up in the morning and not even wake up, sleep, stay in your room in the evening, go to clubs, do whatever you want to do, have fun. You can decide your choices, but you are not responsible for the consequences. Because one plus one is two. Are you with me? You are responsible. See, that's the magic about freedom. You are responsible for your choices, but you are not responsible for the outcome. You are not responsible for the outcome. You can decide to have an indiscriminate sexual experience, but you don't have a choice about the implications of an indiscriminate or wanton sexual exposure. You don't, you don't, have, you don't have the, you don't, you don't determine it. Praise God. Am I communicating? So the truth is that the Christian life gives us the responsibility of very high, the highest of moral standing. And I've shared here what the fruits of the Spirit are. The fruits of the Spirit are the qualities of the, the highest qualities of our humanity. The highest. So you'll be fooling yourself when you say or when you think that, oh, because we preach grace, it's a license for people to misbehave. With freedom comes very high responsibility. Praise God. Praise God. Are we together? With freedom comes very high level of responsibility. Very high level of responsibility. So today I want to just talk about evil communication, corrupt good manners. The Bible says, be not deceived. Evil communication corrupt good manners. Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupt good manners. Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupt good manners. Because our reality is mind reality. Evil communication corrupt good manners. Communication is the feeding of words and impressions. The feeding of words and impression. When it's evil, it destroys good character. Praise God. Because it programs your subconscious. You know, last week I said rewriting your script. Evil communication is scripting in itself. And you know, it's garbage in, garbage out, right? Praise God. It's garbage in, garbage out. The mind is like a computer. It's actually a computer. All the wonders of artificial intelligence. What is artificial intelligence? Artificial intelligence is actually scientific uh, um, effort to make our capacity of the brain becomes to be in a machine. It's scientific efforts to make the capacity of the brain replicated in the machine. Praise God. What we call witchcraft in Africa in the past actually have scientific explanations. So what are scientists doing? The, the Western witches, when they are able to concoct those things, what they do is that they sit in the labs and the research lab laboratories and try to unravel how it can be a reality. The word chemistry comes from the word alchemy. Alchemy means magic. Chemist were actually magicians who used to be in, the, in their secret magical lab and be doing all manner of experiments. That's how chemistry was found. How many of you have watched Merlin? You watch Merlin. You know that old man, that Merlin's father. 
What do you call him? Gaius. Ah, you, you guys have watched all those things. Okay, good. I've watched it too. Gaius is a witch, right? He's a magician. By today, he will be a chemist. If you were to give name to what he was doing, it's chemistry. So what we are studying today in our chemical labs or in chemistry were actually what our forefathers studied as magic. For example, for those of us in Africa, you know, there's a way African things are branded as negative and all that. For those of us in Africa, our forefathers were herbalists. For some of us who grew up as hardcore ultra-conservatives, we also believe that herbalism is witchcraft. Am I lying? Herbalists. So we're told that you don't take herbal drugs. It's witchcraft. But you know what? What our forefathers did in herbal drug is what pharmacies are doing in pharmacognosy. The study of the healing powers of drugs. Our forefathers did it by observation. They know that when you have stomach pain, when you have high blood sugar, chew bitter leaf, it will drop the blood sugar. Praise God. So what do pharmacies do? They take the bitter leaf, extract the active ingredient, and make it into crystals, and put it in a base like cellulose, that white drug. It becomes a drug. And you take it, and it does the same thing that if you are taking the herb and eating it, it should have done. Praise God. Am I communicating? So it shows how powerful the human mind is. It shows how powerful the human mind is. Praise God. So we cannot take it for granted. So for every form of communication is a script that is being written, a code, a programming that is being written. And the Bible did not give us option. It says, be not deceived. Don't fool yourself. Don't deceive yourself. Evil communication corrupt good minds. Don't fool yourself. Don't fool yourself. Don't fool yourself. You know, when we're teenagers, and, you know, teenagers have a lot of struggles, you know. Um, all the bad habits in this world starts at that age. You know, when we're teenagers in secondary school, where the problem starts is parties. Parties. You want to go to party, my friend's birthday, my, you know. And you know, for teenagers, all their hormones are coming alive. So, you know, they want to, you know, there's this craziness. They want to explore. They want to explore life. There are books, thousands of books that have been written on how to, if you have teenage children, how to manage them. Because they say it's a problem. They feel they know more than their parents. In fact, it's worse now because they are not even teenagers. They already feel they know more than their parents. Because they are actually exposed to all manner of information. And their capacity for comprehension is much, much more higher than ours. I told you that some of the features in my phone is my last baby, who is just six years old, that showed it to me. Some of the games I, have, I never knew was inside the phone. In fact, so many things I do with phones, I was using phones for many years. I didn't know that you can use voice prompt to call any information you need in the phone. Android phones. I never knew it was my children that showed it to me. They watch you sign on. Just watch for the younger parent. At three years old, you observe that your children can break your, your phone passwords and codes. Yeah, at three. It's very simple. They'll just be looking at you when you are doing it. You don't know that they have, they have labeled. They, they have the keyboard stored in their brain. When you do like this, they know where your hand is going. It's amazing. It's amazing. You think, that, no, 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 no. Ah, this man, you go and password the phone. Don't worry, password it. When you are just doing it, bah, 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 they are coming where you are pressing, and they will break that password. They will sign in. So they are very intelligent. Praise God. So we go to parties, the struggle is, oh, uh, as Christians, you know Christians, our moral compass at that age is being framed. 
is being framed. Our moral compass is being framed. So there are a lot of conflicts. Um, don't go to parties, go to parties. Oh, don't drink, drink. Oh, don't do this, do that. You know, so many struggles that we go through. But the truth is that there are no questions about morality. We know what is right. The challenge we had at that age is can we resist not doing what is wrong? Or can we resist doing what is wrong? So you hear those who, are, who really love going to parties, they can't resist it. They will tell themselves, I will go to parties. The way I was raised up, we're even made to believe that when you dance in parties, it's a sin. You don't, you don't do that. <laughs> Dancing care. to a worldly song, a carnal song, where they talk about love. We are not even talking about sex. Love. You dare not. It's not, you know, it's, I see people, <laughs> you know, during Pastor Chair Mrs. Wedding, one of the elders from Faith Arena almost killed me that uh, they are playing all manner of songs, that this is, he took it personal. And I tried to avoid him, the man refused. He was terrorizing me, so I got angry. I said, okay, what is wrong with this song now? Okay, I'm ready for you now. What is wrong with this song? Oh yeah, listen to the song, tell me. He said, no, 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 no. It is not Frank Edward that sang it. <laughs> that we have not finished playing Frank Edward. See now, this in wedding, that we are playing all the, that, no, 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 he can't believe this. He can't believe, it was a very serious problem. Oh. So I got angry and started and get that. Okay, this song now, what is wrong with it? And when he saw that, I was not ready for him. Because I tried to avoid it. I said, leave these young people alone. Let them have fun. It is, for goodness sake, God is not a killjoy. For goodness, ah. So you are not happy that they are happy like this? <laughs> Imam, oh yeah, so now I'm ready for him. So he just got angry. And my wife was trying to tell me, cool down, cool down, cool down. He said, oh, say, look, your husband is not too old. That is, I'm not too younger than you. We are, our age is not too different. So I am not old school. I am this, I'm even more new school than your, than your husband. <laughs> ah, the while I was becoming too much, so the man got angry. But that's the way we were brought up. You can't even dance to any of those songs. So the struggle for the teenage, for the teenager was always that, okay, I will go to the party, but I will not dance. It's in those parties they learn how to smoke. And how to take drugs. And how to harass sexually women. Praise God. It's in those parties they learn all manner of bad behavior. So the struggle was always, uh, in Agape First Meeting, it was always a question, is it a wrong thing to go to a party? Praise God. Hallelujah. God gave me wisdom at a very young age. I was very clear about my moral standing, my moral compass. So the line was always drawn. I never attended any party until I was a full-blown adult, as in church when a Christian brother is doing her birthday, and it is worship song we sing there. It's worship song. They will not be dancing church. <laughs> we dance church dance there. All these kind of shoki that people are dancing, shaku shaku. It's just there. Uh, it, oh, uh, it amazes me. Pastor Ike, when I was growing up, I cannot comprehend how a Christian should, should be dancing shaku shaku. That means he learned it. It's the act of learning it that was the problem with me. That he learned it. Where was he learning it from? With which music? <laughs> he dancing shaku. Where did he learn it from? That it, that's, I, it, it was a problem for me. Now, how did you learn this song? <laughs> Praise God. Well, the point is that in those engagements, scripts are being written and deposited in your subconscious. What the Bible is saying here is that, look, you do not have a choice in it. Praise God. Evil communication will corrupt your good manners. Evil communication will corrupt your good manners. You must script yourself to that point where when you hear such communication, your internal mechanism rejects it. Because evil communication corrupts good manners. God is not telling us to ostracize ourselves like the essence of biblical times. You know, John the Baptist was an essence. 
The Essenes, they were another arm of, you know, in those days, we are Pharisaical Christians. We are the Pharisees, we are the Sadducees, we are the scribes. The scribes are more of the Sadducees, you know. Then we are the Essenes. Of course, the Bible did not speak much about the Essenes, but the Essenes were the people who founded monasticism. Monasticism is what you have in many of the Catholic movements, and ancient Christians, they still have it till today. If you go to the Syriac church, that's the, 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 the Orthodox church found in Syria and Russia and some parts of Europe, they still practice monasticism. What's monasticism? The world is too corrupt. We cannot relate to the world because the Bible says, come out of them and be separate. So what do they do? They build monasteries and separate themselves and live like hermits. Hermits is like, um, you know hermits? A what? A social recluse. That's, you know, you see a hermit crab. A hermit crab, they come out like a snail. Once you want to see someone, they quickly hide into their holes and all that. They, 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 are, they are not a social recluse. I think that's a very good description of who hermits are. They don't relate. They live in monasteries. That's why if you travel some parts of the world, there are isolated mountain regions. They have temples there. Those temples were built by those early Christians who were essence, who believed in separating themselves from the world and having nothing to do with the world. That's not what Jesus has called us to. That's not what Jesus has called us to. Praise God. When the Bible says, come out from them and be separate, it's talking about a mental fencing. Of course, you know, Jesus was always found in the wrong places. Yes, he was. Whenever a party is happening in the town of the richest men and politicians, you must find Jesus there. In those days, yes. Is he in, in Galilee, in Capernaum, anywhere that's the biggest gigs in town? Jesus was always there. So much so the Pharisees and the scribes, Sadducees called him possessed with Beelzebub. That how can you call yourself the son of God? Are you like drinking like this? You are always in parties. Can you imagine the like of John the Baptist, uh, Peter, who had Pharisaical roots? So, but guess what? When Jesus was in those gatherings, he was doing the influencing. He was doing the influencing. Praise God. When Jesus was in those gatherings, you know, you remember Zacchaeus? Zacchaeus was the richest man in town. Jesus said, Zacchaeus, I'm in town. I'm spending the night in your house. Of course, I'm spending the night in your house. There must be a feast and there must be a party. But guess what? There was an impact upon Zacchaeus, and Zacchaeus declared that today, every man that I have ever defrauded, there was a repentance when Zacchaeus had an encounter with Jesus. And he said, every man that I have ever defrauded, I will give it to them back. Twofold and fourfolds. And Jesus declared unto Zacchaeus, even without me speaking a word, Zacchaeus, today salvation has come to your house. And that is authentic salvation. Not like the rich man that came to Jesus and said, I have fulfilled all that the law had written. You know, that's where we must know the difference between grace and the law. The law is human effort. You saw the two rich men, the tales of the two rich men. The, man, the first rich man came to Jesus and said, Jesus, what must I do to be saved? Jesus said, you know what the law says? Go and fulfill all of them. He says, everything written in the law I have done. That means I have met the condition for salvation by the law. And Jesus said, oh, that's very good. Okay, go now. Everything you have, go and sell it and give to the poor. Salvation means you want to follow me. Give it to the poor. Your faith is hanging on those things. Give it to the poor, then come and follow me. Was the man, did the man come to Jesus? He said he left feeling sad. But the other man, out of willingness, came to Jesus. Jesus came to him. And he accepted Jesus into his home. The same thing that Jesus told the former man who was hinging salvation on the law, the same thing Jesus told him to do. The same thing. Go and sell all that you have, right? Zacchaeus, without Jesus telling him, said, Jesus, Everything, I, all that I have defrauded, I will sell my possession. I'll give it to them four times. It's the same thing. I'll be, am I the only one saying it? It's the same thing. One of them was by law. He was trying to be saved by his, by his works. The other one was acting out of his salvation. He was already saved. 
When you have a genuine encounter with Jesus, living a life that is pleasing is not a struggle. It comes out from the inside out. It's not the reverse. It's not the reverse. Many of you are struggling with your work because you are still trying to please God by your works. You don't struggle to please God. God is pleased already. But God has called us to a very high standard of moral and ethical behavior. Very high standard. That's the highest of living qualities. The highest of living qualities. The highest of living qualities. Evil communication. What is communication? Association. The word communication in that context speaks about evil or association. Relation. That's relating. Connections. These are synonyms for the word. Associations. Relations. Connections. Dealings. Communions. Socializing. Inter interchange. Or intercourse. Social intercourse. Intercourse is exchange. Correspondence, dialogue, conversations, discussions, meetings, talking, speaking. So, so use all those words. Use all those words. Yeah, uh, this amplified beautiful communion, associations. Use all those words I've said. Interrelationship, correspondence, dialogue, conversations. Connections, dealings, communions, use all those words and connect them with, with the scriptures. It will make more sense to you. Hallelujah. Now, when the Bible says evil, what does it mean? Evil means profoundly immoral. Profoundly immoral. Bad, wrongful, unholy, sinful, vicious, diabolical, devilish, nefarious. Sinister, nasty, disagreeable, unpleasant, horrible, filthy, vile, sexually explicit. Praise God. In this context, and in the context of the society we live in today, we can say evil is anything that denies the reality of God. Anything that doubts, because if you look at the context Paul was speaking, there were arguments about resurrection. I'm sure you know that the Sadducees never believed in resurrection. The Sadducees were like scientists. They never believed in spirit. They believed when a man is dead, he's dead. So they could not comprehend the reality about Jesus' resurrection. Praise God. And guess what? You know, the early church was a melting pot of all forms of ideology. You know, that's why sometimes I laugh at Christians who feel that the church is not a place where you can have sound intellectual discourse. The early church was born after philosophical explosions. 